Let's look at error handling. So an error can happen in a bunch of different situations, right? There's a terminal event we've already seen, right? And a flux or a mono can emit an error and then it's done. No more other events. So the original sequence does not continue after a after an error, ha error happens. And also the on error method of the subscriber is called. Right? We've seen we've seen that, right? We were able to pass an additional lambda and we were able to have that be called when an error happens. So that's what we're going to do with exercise eight. We are going to be looking at error handling. Okay, so what I have here is a flux called int numbers flux with exception. What this does is it's going to return, it is going to send items from one to 10. It at least plans to send items from one to 10, but at I think an item five, it gives out an error and then that's it. Once an error happens, it's like, it's over, right? And there's no more elements being sent from that item, from that flux. Okay, so print values from the int numbers flux with exception and print a message when the error happens. Okay, so here I can do react reactive sources dot int number flux with exception. And then I do a dot subscribe. So this is when a number is issued. I do a sysout of that number. And then when there is an error, I'm going to do a sysout of that. Error happened. Okay. So now notice what happens if I don't do this, right? Like without doing this, what's the behavior? I'm going to run this thing. It prints one, two, three, four, boom. Okay, this was the error. There was an error that happened in the flux and uh, this was after four was emitted. Okay, we don't want that. Well, that's gonna happen anyway, but we wanna print, an, print a message, right? Can do this, can put a, another callback to the subscribe and it is going to call that thing when the error happens. You see that? It's it's almost like a catch, right? You've you've consumed the error. You don't see that stack trace anymore, and uh, it executes this. So it's almost like a catch where you handle it so that the error the bu error doesn't uh, bubble up. Okay. All right. So this is the error case. There is an alternative way to do this, which is a method called do on error. So you have a dot do on error, which takes a consumer, which is basically the error. And then here you can do a sysout of error and then e dot get message. Okay, so it is going to return a flux again, just like the other one. It is going to return a flux where when an error happens, it is going to do this. It is different from subscribe because subscribe is kind of hooking onto the main flux. Here, you're creating a new flux, which is going to do this. Okay, what does it mean? Since you haven't caught it in the subscribe now, the error does bubble up. Okay, so it's basically saying when an error happens, you're going to pass the error, but then you also do this thing, okay? So as you can imagine, there are two different use cases where you would need this. You use the subscribes error hook when you want to con swallow the error and do something else. It's like, I got it, I'm going to handle it, right? But if you don't want to swallow the error, but instead, when on an error happening, you got to affect some, some side effect, right? I've got, I have to push something to analytics when an er error happens, but still I want to let the further you know operators down the chain handle the error. I'm not going to handle the error, but I want to do something, make a register, and make a note that an error happened as a side effect. This would be a good example for it. I, it's going to do something when an error happens, 
but it is not going to swallow the error itself. Okay, so that's the uh, distinction between the two. All right, the next one is print values from int number flux with exception and continue on errors. So here is another one we can do. So let's say this is useful when you want like a fallback or an alternative. Okay, so let's see, get this guy here. These all kind of sound similar, but they are used for different purposes on error continue. Okay, so here you have the error Okay, what is the item? I'm going to tell you in just a second. Oh, I'm going to have to comment this on. Okay, so I'm going to rerun. So it's going to run one, two, three, four. You see this? It is going to basically throw the error. It's not going to swallow the error. It has kind of did this. Well, it has kind of swallowed the error. It basically said, I, I want to continue when an error happens. So it does not, and it, you basically said, I don't want to terminate. I want to continue, right? The, the fact about an error ending the flux is the default, but it doesn't have to be, okay? What you have here is a new flux. That it's it's a new flux which basically continues with that, right? It's gonna say, okay, give me the next element. It's gonna still continue listening to the next element. It is not going to let the error terminate. So this is again another thing which which tends to confuse people. Like, like yeah, you said error is a terminal event. Now, how does this work? Well, the reason error is a terminal event is that the consumer stops asking for more, okay? So the, the thing that emits values is gonna to continue to emit, but the consumer is gonna be like, there's an error, I'm stopping. That's the default behavior, okay? But you can write code where the consumer says, even in spite of an error, I'm going to continue, which is what you're doing over here. What you have is a replacement flux, which is going to ignore an error. It is changing the behavior, the default behavior of just stopping to request for more. You remember, it's like you're requesting. It's it's a default behavior of stopping to request for more. Instead, you're saying, even on an error, I'm going to ignore the error. I'm going to do something with it, but I'm going to continue. Okay? There is an alternative to this as well. You can actually replace it. You can replace the error condition with a, with a fallback value. And to prove that this is not just the uh, the thing that's sending it, which is editing out, which is stopping, and making it a terminal condition, but the receiver, so here is the item, okay? So basically the way I have coded this, and we're gonna talk about writing flux. So basically what I have here is a map where I'm checking if E equals five, I'm throwing a new runtime exception, okay? And then I'm returning E. Well, the way it works is it's basically gonna go and pick the actual values. If I were to get this, get the item here, I'm actually going to get that five. You see that? I got the five. So it is basically saying, as a consumer, I, I'm okay with the error. I'm not making it a terminal condition. I'm going to look for more because the flux is continuing to send. It just happened to send an error, and then it's going about its business. So it's up to the consumer to say, I don't want it to be a terminal event. I want to to continue. Okay. So I'm going to put the error back here. So this one is uh, a way for you to provide a fallback sequence. You can put a fallback sequence here. So this is how it works. You can do a on error resume. You can basically switch over to a new flux. Okay, I'm going to say on error resume. Okay, and uh, when there is an error, Depending on the error, you can just create a new flux. I'm going to say flux dot just, which is a way of creating a flux from a bunch of hard coded elements. I'm going to say minus one and minus two, I think. Yeah, minus two that I need to send. Okay. So on error resume, whenever there's an error, stop using this flux. Instead, 
use this flux, which is basically minus one and minus two. So now when I run this, what's gonna happen is it's gonna go up to one, two, three, four in the original flux. And when there's an error, it is gonna switch to this new flux and it's gonna say, okay, I want minus one and minus two. These are all different ways of, again, drawing an analogy of the uh, try-catch blocks, right? A catch by default means that the execution ends there, but it doesn't have to. You can write uh, code to avoid ending it. You can write code to continue. You can write code to swallow the error. You can write code to change direction and call a new piece of code. So all that is possible. So as you see here, when the error happened, minus one and minus two returned right away immediately because it was just a instant flux that I created on the, with just these two numbers. All right. So those were errors and error handling in reactive programming. All right. So this was exercise eight. There is a do finally as well. Again, drawing an analogy to the to the finally block, we have a do finally operator, right? You say flux dot do finally, and what you're going to get back is a signal type because a finally can be can be reached either when something a flux completed successfully or if a flux failed with an error. So what you can do is you can inspect what the signal type is. Right? If the signal type is a signal type dot on complete. Again, this is a type provided by uh, Project Reactor. If it's on complete, then you're going to print done. If it's on error, you're going to print error or whatever, right? So this is the this is again analogous to the finally block in a try catch. Okay, so you can put this at the end, and it is going to execute the code here, and it's going to tell you whether it was, it completed or failed or whatever. It does not run when an element is emitted, right? It runs only on the two terminal classes.